Uh, hmm. Yes, well, quite. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another video from PAX East 2016. Let's have a gander at Pit People, the new game from the Behemoth, aka Game 4. Yes, it's Lord. Let, I think we'll just let it speak for itself. Honestly, seems like the best idea. I find myself wondering what the world must have been like before the bear crashed into our frail planet, transforming all we once knew into a colorful kaleidoscope of delicious chaos, and I love it. The world was more hospitable, no doubt, more orderly, more sensibly sickening, because it sounded boring, and I hate being bored. I can't imagine a world without the bear, or the storms, yes, the storms. Beautiful waves of emerald blood cry down from the heavens, promising death in lawless disarray, constantly upsetting the order. I get butterflies in my tummy just thinking about it. Yes, yes! Speaking of which, Let's see. Oh, it's Horatio, the humble blueberry farmer, loving father, and the most boring creature on the face of this planet. But what's this? Looks like you've got a spicy situation on your hands, hmm? Well, it's been nice knowing you, Horatio. Not really. But now it's time for you to die. Yes, how exciting. Not for you, of course. Well, that is one hell of an intro, I've got to give it that. So, the Behemoth brought you Alien Hominid Castle Crashers and, of course, Battle Block Theatre. It was only appropriate that this was the last video that I recorded at PAX East 2016, when Battle Block Theatre was, I believe, the last video I recorded at PAX East 2013. So, nice to get back on the horse with another game from this developer, whose games that I certainly do like very much. At least so far, at any rate. Alien Hominid was an absolute bastard of a game, I'll certainly admit that. It was very, very difficult. Castle Crashers was an awesome, if somewhat repetitive, brawler. Although a hell of a lot more fun in co-op. And of course, Battle Block Theatre was a very interesting little co-op, co-optional puzzle platformer indeed. I had a lot of fun with that one. This, this is something entirely different. This is actually a hex-based tactics game, if you can believe that. And you think, oh, why on earth would Behemoth develop something like that? Well... It's kind of like I mentioned in the Pyre video, you shouldn't typecast developers. It's not fair to stick them into a particular genre or some sort of particular theme and keep them there. They should be allowed to express their creativity and they've certainly done so here with Pit People by going into a genre which is definitely unfamiliar to them and also not a genre which is generally associated with the idea of couch co-op. Now, Strangely enough, as you can see here, we're moving two characters simultaneously. That's because I'm playing with one of the developers. The little bar up to the top there is actually tied into a giant yellow lever, which is part of a converted Razor fight stick. They built these specifically for the show. Mostly, I think, because if you've ever been to a pack show and seen the Behemoth setup, they always bring arcade cabinets with their games in them, which is obviously a really big attraction. That's what I played... Battle Block Theatre on last time. Admittedly, that was on 360 at the time, and it was certainly something that we didn't even necessarily think would come to PC. The game was initially intended for Xbox 360 only, and I did suggest to them, you know, might be a good idea to bring this to PC, and thankfully they did. I'm not taking credit for that at all, by the way. It's just so happened to be one of the myriad voices in that regard, since both Alien Hominid and Castle Crashers also did well on PC. But they brought along another fight stick conversion for a very unusual game. You don't usually use a fight stick to play a turn-based tactics game. But you know what's very strange about it is that despite the fact that I have certainly my doubts of whether or not this fight stick conversion will ever be mass-produced, it works surprisingly well for this game. And the addition of the lever is an interesting little bit of tactile awesomeness. Does it serve a practical purpose? Hell no, but does it feel like pulling the lever on a slot machine? A one-armed bandit? Yes, it does. And you know what? That's strangely appealing. It's hard to explain without having actually shown you what it looks like. It looks a little bit like this. Let me check down the bottom right of the screen there. Let me expand that for a second so you can see. Yeah, those are the controllers. 
bonkers, right? Absolutely bonkers. The fact that they created something like this speaks volumes to, one, the way that they care about how their games are presented, especially on a show floor like that, two, the sort of expectation that people have of their products, and three, the fact that this idea of sitting on the couch and playing their games is, and this is a direct quote from them, part of their DNA as a developer. It's not something they can easily abandon. All of their games have been playable with a controller on a couch. And even though Castle Crashers, Alien Hominid, and Battle Block did incredibly well on PC after the fact, they still wanted to keep this idea around, even for a game that is, in my opinion, kind of quintessentially PC. A hex-based, turn-based tactics game is not the sort of thing that you generally play on a couch. But you can. And the interface has been designed as such. So you're going to not be seeing too much in terms of a lot of text and a lot of statistics. Something that you probably see a lot in a typical PC strategy game. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Firstly, we have ourselves a cutscene right here. A beautiful lady. She looked hungry. Horatio shared his blueberries. Hey, I know you got it. No, you shared your berries. Huh? How generous of you. How did you her win? name was Pipistrella, and though she looked more than capable, she requested Horatio's aid. You see, her castle was raided by grumpy warriors, and she doesn't like that very much. Go on, my little hero. Perhaps this could become a mutually beneficial relationship. Well, yes, of course. I mean, why not? Well, this is a scene that is somewhat reminiscent of Castle Crashers, definitely a very similar aesthetic, but certainly by no means the same game. Now, getting back to the point, as uh, talking about the user interface, there's a very much a lack of numbers, a lack of big statistics, or anything that would really obscure the interface on a display like a television, which means that the controls are very, very simple. This also means that the controls are in fact so simple that you can't directly target a particular unit. If you're next to multiple units, your pit person, as they call it, and that's not finished, so don't worry about that. Still not a finished game, just making that abundantly clear. Your pit person will target whoever they feel like. So if you wish to target one specific person, you need to make sure that you're only standing next to them when you move, because you will attack at the end of your turn once you've moved. And you'll see on the screen that it's clearly going to give you options as to where to stand and what sort of attacks you're going to get. And you may have noticed there on the screen, it also let you know that if you use a hammer-like weapon or a mace, you actually have strength against any character that is wearing a helmet. This will also gain you gold, and the fact that gold is coming out of the heads of enemies is meant to indicate that you are strong against that particular type of enemy. So it's an interesting sort of little piece of feedback. You'll notice that my shield-bearing warriors over there are deflecting the arrows, which is pretty cool. And they're certainly strong against those archers. But what you'll also notice, which is very interesting about the user interface, is that the game plays quite quickly. And the reason for that is that it has co-op. Now, you might be thinking, or indeed you may have been thinking since the start of this video, and I don't blame you for that because I initially thought the same thing. Co-op seems completely and totally pointless in a game like this. It seems like a waste of space. It's a gimmick feature. It doesn't really serve any practical purpose. Why would you put it in? Well, firstly, I'd say why not put it in? Like, if you have the option to put it in a game like this, you might as well. You know, it gives you the option to play with your friend, with your girlfriend, with your parents, whatever. It gives you the option to be social in a game that is otherwise usually a very solitary experience. So why not? Secondly, and this is the most important point, it doubles the speed of your play. Because you can move two characters simultaneously, it makes the battles go a hell of a lot faster. And it was surprising to me how much I actually ended up valuing that feature having played this game on the floor. It's like, wow, we can crack through battles a hell of a lot faster than we would be able to without sacrificing any of the strategic or tactical elements. Now, the game is very much streamlined in terms of being a turn-based, hex-based game. No doubt about that. Again, unfinished. Ignore that. <laughs> Left it in because I trust you guys to realize that some of this stuff is not finished and it's a demo from the show floor. Don't you dare think otherwise. But it's nice to be able to get through this stuff. And yeah, again, again, the game is streamlined. And I think that for some people that is going to be a problem. Because they were expecting maybe something that was a little bit more advanced. That is not to say that this game doesn't have strategy. It does, and it clearly develops as you go forward, especially as you start to flesh out your army of different pit people with different weapon sets, as well as different hats, which I don't believe affect the stats, but they look amazing, and one of them looks like a polar bear. So that is all you really need to know in that regard. But it is not an unfair, albeit subjective, criticism to suggest that 
compared to other turn-based, hex-based strategy games along this particular line, yes, the game is definitely quite simplistic. But it's fairly fast-paced and you are dealing otherwise with rather large battles that don't necessarily take as much time. And of course, they take about half the time when you're playing in co-op. So I appreciate the fact that that feature is there. And if you're looking for a lighter experience, you still want a taste of turn-based strategy, but perhaps you're looking for something that's a little bit quicker, doesn't maybe take as much time, and of course has an inimitable sense of style and craziness, then the Behemoth's new offering might very well be up your alley. It's also worth bearing in mind that you, perhaps as a more hardcore gamer, and I assume that you are if you're watching this channel, are very familiar with this particular genre, and you've probably played multiple games within it. Here's the thing. Not everybody that played Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater is familiar with that particular genre. Bear in mind, both of those games did insanely well on Xbox Live Arcade, which is a service that doesn't really have too many games in the turn-based strategy genre. And of course, that's a console that doesn't have all that many games in that genre either. So it's possible that those people may very well be unfamiliar with the genre. They are, however, very familiar with the games of the Behemoth. They may very well follow that developer. They may very well buy pretty much anything that developer makes. So you could view Pit People as a streamlined, yes, simplified, but it could also be potentially a gateway into this particular genre. Since this is obviously coming out on console as well as PC, I have a feeling that it should do relatively well. I mean, it's not like the Xbox One has any other good games available. Well, I mean, unfortunately, that's actually kind of true, but never mind. You know, ignore that. It's all good. I certainly think that their indie offerings definitely need a little bit of a boost, a shot in the arm, so something like this would be helpful. It is also worth noting that the complete game will have a two versus two competitive mode, so there is a reason to bring your friends around and play a round of pit people or whatever. So, it does really inherit that Xbox Live DNA from the previous titles, but it's also quintessentially PC friendly. So I think that that is a great selling point for those that watch this channel, no doubt about it. Now, looking at the characters on the screen right now, there are a couple of different things to note. I already showed you the fact that the mace count as the helmet guys. However, what you may also notice in the next turn is that the dual-wielding berserker fellow, as you can see, can actually use a ranged attack, so it's possible to throw your axe. Now, all these different weapon sets and different classes have a variety of different characteristics, so it's possible to manipulate said characteristics. And you notice how quick it is to set up all of the movement here and do something relatively advanced. Move my shield guy around the back here so that he can deflect the arrows that are coming from the character on the right. Move my berserker back and then put the mace wielder in front to do melee damage which is a pretty good setup that not only protects the Berserker, but it also sets up, I think, the optimal damage. And I was able to do that in just a couple of seconds. I do not need to explain that in the slightest. Why would I? It's it's the Behemoth. You know, actually, can I shut up for a second and let you hear this music? Because holy crap, it's good. If you've played Castle Crashers, if you play Battle Block Theater, you probably recognize some of the talent behind the soundtrack for this game. There were various people, for the most part, Newgrounds members that created the soundtrack for Castle Crashers, including David Orr, Dan Paladin, Urbanus, Command Beans, Water Flame was involved in a lot of it. I can't specifically identify which composer is responsible for this track, but it's good to hear that the influences of Castle Crashers and Battle Block Theater are clearly present in this particular game. Uh, I think Behemoth has a very unique personality when it comes to its games. They, again, refer to it as their DNA. And I think the music is a very key part of that. I don't think you can necessarily ignore it. You know, the music is almost part of the aesthetic, part of the art design. I mean, is music not art? Of course it is. But in terms of the gameplay, I still enjoy it, despite the fact that it is certainly simple. You know, I've played way more complicated turn-based games than this, and I enjoy them too. 
But I enjoyed this experience as well. Being able to crack through three or four different battles, recruit different heroes, see a little bit of story, have a few laughs with the narrator, meddle with a little bit of equipment and things like that, all in the course of about 25 minutes, was a very enjoyable experience. It's nice to be able to crack that much in so little time. You get a real sense of satisfaction there. And there's barely any downtime, really, in this game, honestly, which I approve of a great deal. So, yeah, you can make the argument it's simple. I think that's fair, and some people are not going to like that, but there is at least a reason for them simplifying it. They didn't do it for the sake of it. They did it for the sake of speed, for the sake of accessibility, and for the sake of cramming an awful lot into a very small time frame. Those are all good reasons, even if you don't like the result. So it's worth bearing that in mind. All right, let's get forward a little bit. I'm going to show you the upgrade system here and the equipment. So there are various pit people that you can recruit. These are just the ones that we have in the demo. There are going to be tons of different types available for you to get a hold of. And you can swap out their equipment. And this is like the only part of the game where it's really going to show you a lot of stats, which is a deliberate choice. It's designed specifically to make sure that... Things stay fluid, things stay quick. You notice that I'm equipping a different kind of hat here for my character. I can pick the polar order or the prickly hat. Well, I pick the, the polar bear hat, I think. I did promise you a polar bear hat. I have now delivered. X was indeed prompt today. You can also equip different gear. And the more gear that you put on, the heavier gear as well, will affect things like your ability to move. So you notice those four little footprints there. They're going to represent the number of hexes that you can move. It's an incredibly simple representation that would work well on a television that you're sitting far away across the room from. And that's good. But you can still clearly see the stats represented via bar graphs. And you can also see the precise numbers in there as well. So if you do want to tweak, you can. But it's also relatively quick to do. So that feeds into the overall design philosophy of speed and streamlining. I'm going to skip forward to the last battle just to show you a couple of cool things. Then I'll round off with my conclusion on pit people, which I think you can probably tell is fairly positive at this point. My only concern really is that it may be a little bit less fun to play on your own. But I think with how hilarious the narrator is and the amount of customization available for the characters as well as relatively fast-paced combat even solo, I think it's still going to be a pretty fun game. It's just not going to be as deep a game as some people were hoping. But I have to ask, were you actually expecting a deep tactics game from the Behemoth? Really? Were you? You know, I don't know why you would be. I, Castle Crashers was not the most complex brawler either. It's worth bearing that in mind. Yes, it was a great game, but it's quite a simplistic one, really. It's like, here's your magic attack. Here's your spammable attack at go. You know, I would say that it was barely as complex as something like Golden Axe, and it certainly wasn't as complicated as other more recent brawlers. But that didn't make it a bad game. It just meant that it was quite simple and very, very easy to get into. It didn't necessarily have the depth that some people were looking for, but simultaneously, I think the game was incredibly fun for a lot of people. I think we're going to see the same here with Pit Pool. It's just going to be much, much more pronounced. Getting a simple brawler is maybe even expected. I think it's an unfair expectation of the genre. It got a reputation for being a bit button mashy, way too arcadey. I, I personally love the brawler genre. I think it's wonderful, and it's good to see a bit of a revival there. But because this is a turn-based strategy game, I think people are going to more easily be able to point at those simplicities and maybe n nail them down as flaws, potentially. But that is highly subjective. You're not wrong. Just saying that a lot of people don't necessarily share that opinion. Now, this final battle here has a bunch of different enemy types. Got an archer in the back here. You'll also notice they all have their individual names, which I think is a nice little cute feature. The fellow with the club can actually knock your troops back, which makes things a little bit interesting. Makes positioning certainly a little bit more important, and trying to get to the archer at the back is perhaps a good idea where possible. So it's not like the game doesn't have strategy, it's just, a, it's a very visual and very obvious form of strategy. It's, it's very digestible just by looking at what's going on. This doesn't look complex to you, does it? I, I hope not. It certainly doesn't look complex to me, and it looks very obvious as to what you're supposed to be doing. Now, there is something that I'd like to show you here in this battle which is relevant, and that is the fact that you can level up in the battle, and that can be quite crucial since it will heal your pit people up. Now, the levels happen almost out of nowhere. It's this big purple beam that comes down. Let me show you one of those. Now, my character was almost dead, but a handy dandy level up, which covered the entire screen in purple nonsense, was able to heal him back up again. So they haven't skimped on the RPG factors. I mean, you could call this an SRPG if you liked. You know, it is Fire Emblem-esque. There's no real doubt about that. 
And it does have leveling aspects and all that sort of thing, but it does not really have activatable abilities. At least it didn't in the demo at any rate. And I don't really necessarily see how that would work, considering the way that the controls were set up for the demo, which actually had a very limited number of buttons. Of course. Why not? I don't necessarily think that they would add something like that, but it would be kind of cool. I think, honestly, proc-based abilities or X happens in the situation that Y is the case would probably work quite well. It's like, you are next to three people, ergo this will happen. I mean, technically, you already see that. If you move back with the Berserker, he'll throw his axe and all sorts of things like that. So it's not like it's impossible to implement that sort of functionality with a streamlined setup. Anyway, the conclusion is the game looks wonderful. In many, many ways, the narration is hilarious, the storyline is hilarious, the tactics are fast, streamlined, and of course very fun to play with other people, no doubt about that. You can quite literally use horse shit, no, I'm deadly serious, to mark your path on the map. No, I, I am serious, that is actually true. That will help you navigate this world and figure out what exactly is going on. And of course, you have that home base area that we were looking at earlier, which is going to allow you to buy upgrades and do all sorts of little things like that. So it has that element of persistence throughout. You can also, as you're going to notice here, rescue, quote unquote, characters. And by rescue, we mean put them in a cage, which looks something like this. Yep, kill everyone except the recruit, throw the net at said recruit, and... You take the fighter home in your cart, and you will be able to persuade them to join your crew of pit people. Reasonable. <laughs> totally reasonable. I mean, let's be honest, it was going to get eaten anyway. Let me skip to the rescue, and I'll show you exactly what kind of class of character we just grabbed. This is the only pit person I have that can do capture at the moment, the sort of gladiatorial setup here. And there's the cage. We recruited Glutton the Cupcake which you get to take note of in your survival guide, and that's going to give you a bunch of information on Glutton the Cupcake and the race of cupcake people. It's going to tell you what it's good against, what it's bad against. Again, very visual. Now, not a bunch of stats, just some nice little pictures, give you a nice indication of what exactly this character can do, and all sorts of things like that. And there is going to be, apparently, a huge variety of different characters to recruit, which is kind of awesome. Conclusion is that I think this game is a lot of fun. I think it's definitely got an audience. It may be somewhat limited for some PC players, but I would suggest that it's somewhat unfair to judge it solely by its simplicity, and perhaps the speed and the streamlined nature may very well end up being a selling point, something appealing to PC gamers as opposed to a downside. One way or the other, if anything, I'm just looking forward to putting the soundtrack to this game in my collection. It sounds just as good, if not better, than the stuff that we've seen previously. And there we go, just it's dumping off my items and... Oh. And for all, it, it, it was a bear. It's, I'm gone. All right, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. It's a look at Pit People, aka Game 4 from the Behemoth. If you like this video, then by all means, do feel free to click the like button if you did not. Thank you for playing. Now go away. I'll see you next time, then.